Good Monday morning, Ospreys. I'm Ryan Hennessy alongside Alex Gatlin, center court with Matthew Driscoll. Coach is not here today, but you know he's on the road in that. Got to keep going. We got to press on, <laughs> right? Keep going. But uh, he said he wished he could be here. That cold storm up in New Jersey had a good, good weekend. Home, mm -hmm. home week away. Uh, UNF basketball against USC Upstate, winning 78 to 62. Alex, what did you see in that game? At Dallas Moore, big game. Um, Nick, I can't even get his name. M Malonga. 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 16 points as well. That's a big game for him. I think that's a little bit different than he usually has in stepping up as a young player. What do you see out of that? Well, again, like you said, Malonga came in and had a fantastic game. 16 points and six rebounds along with an assist and two steals. So Malonga was the real presence on the court for them along with Dallas Moore, but you can't always forget about Bebe Daniels who had 12 points off the bench along with six rebounds. So, and then everybody else contributed too. We had uh, a total of six guys on the team in double digits. And also Bo Beach and Chris Davenport with nine rebounds each. But tell us a little bit more about some of the guys coming off the bench too. I mean, I mean, you, well, you talked about the bench, but I got, I, I, when I looked at the biggest thing that I saw was definitely Chris Davenport, Bo Beach. I mean, obviously not leading the team in points, but nine rebounds, 10 points. That's that's pretty impressive to me. I yeah. mean, these two big guys, like I talked to Driscoll, we talked about this earlier, stepping up in big games. I mean, they're really the big guys now without, you know, the Romello Banks now. I, I, th I think Bo Beach needs to play that four, and then Davenport the five. He can pretty much stretch the floor. Having 10 rebounds, nine assists, I'll take that and then have, you know, Dallas Moore go off and then him do the rebounds and get the bulk. But something that I wanted to see, you know, five assists, three steals, Dallas Moore. I don't want to move too quick into la to next game last night, but – Dallas Moore's been rebounding the ball pretty well. Yeah. As, as, you know, little guy, Driscoll talks about, little guy likes to get down and get those rebounds and run down the court quick and then dish it out to Trent Mackey. Um, but that was a big game for them. I think that, you know, winning against USC Upstate last year, obviously they had Ty Green. Uh, he's not there anymore, but they had some young guys. And I want to talk about it. You know, they had Buchanan, 31 points. We talked about giving up a lot of points to one player. Is that a big thing for the Ospreys? Are they really giving up one player? going off, taking a bunch of shots, but we still win the game by a good margin. I mean, 78-62. Well, against JU, we had Babineau, who also had 30 points on something like 29 shots. And he played the whole game. Yeah. So they're like throwing one guy, I think, to try to beat the Ospreys, and it's not working because we've got everyone. Well, because I think what's happening is that the Ospreys are shutting down most of their options, and they're making everybody else have to score. Uh, and it's really causing problems for the other teams trying to keep up with the Ospreys while they're putting up Huge numbers. I mean, last night they put up 94 points Absolutely. against NJIT. And we so. move on to last night. Obviously, yeah. last night you, you talked about, I mean, putting up huge points. Mm -hmm. And that, that's something that really impressed me. Shout out to Coach Driscoll. Up in that cold, I mean, man, it was cold. But they, they were shooting the ball well like they were down in Florida right now. I mean, 23-pointers, a franchise record for the Ospreys. <coughs> Excuse me, Dallas Moore, 29 points. Tell me about what you saw at Dallas. Well, Dallas Moore had a great game with 29 points, and then you add on eight assists as well. <clears throat> uh, but I think the biggest thing is that they were shooting 49% from the field. When you make almost half of your shots, that's huge. That means every time you go down the court, there's a 50-50 chance you're going to score. So yeah. I think that was huge for the Ospreys, along with the fact that they shot 45% from three as well. Uh, obviously, Trent Mackey, four for 12. I mean... Uh, from three, and then we had a Bo Beach, 20.7 rebounds, six for 11. The guy's shooting the ball, um, 23 pointers, a record, franchise school record. I feel like it only gets better from here. I mean, you had you had Malonga go off last game, and now you have, you know, obviously Dallas Moore always is in the talk. Bo Beach, every okay. other game he either drops 20 or he has a bunch of rebounds, you know, it's something like that. But my big thing is if we can't shoot the three, how are we going to fend against these teams? I mean, mm -hmm. it looks like. I mean, Trent Mackey, is that a win? Four for 12 from three? I mean, you know, it's a decent percentage, but, like, you're throwing the ball up a lot to shoot that three against a new NGI team in our conference. I mean, they were kind of the team that was supposed to beat us. Mm -hmm. um, they, a lot of people were saying the Ospreys are going to go down to NGIT. Are they going to beat us? They didn't, obviously, but, you know, the big question I want to ask is moving on to this game. we got a game on Saturday, USC, or excuse me, FGCU, big rival, big rival. Um, and they're second in the conference. So are they going to be the team that, that we have to beat to prove that we can go undefeated in the conference? Well, I think they are 100% the team that, that we need to beat in order to prove that we are the best team. Uh, but at the same time, we've shown that when one player struggles, everybody else picks him up and everybody else does a good job of trying to do 
uh, what he needed to do at that time. So like last night when uh, you said that uh, Trent had a, had a rough game, Aaron Bottinger came off the bench. He had 11 points, uh, three for six from three. Uh, Demarcus Daniels came off the bench, had 11 points. We had Trent, or I'm sorry, Bo Beach, 20 points. Uh, Dallas Moore, 29 points. So yeah. everybody else steps up when one player goes down. It seems like at least two people have a really good game. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it's kind of rolling the dice, obviously, on who it's going to be. And that's what I kind of like about it. It's whoever's got the hot hand that night, and you need that. I mean, obviously, we relied on in the tournament with Bo Beach. And Bo Beach was on. He had the hot hand, but Dallas didn't. Trent Mackey did not look good in the tournament last year. And this is really what it is. Coach Driscoll said he doesn't want to be a one and done. FGCU, a couple years ago, that was their year. When they, that coach left, Coach Driscoll wants to make this team a legacy. They want UNF to be a basketball school. And I really want to see that year after year going to the tournament, making a run this year. I feel like we have more depth. The only thing I'm scared about, we talked about, is size. Do we have the size to really do well deep? But obviously, you know, this is a huge game coming up. I, I'm excited, as yeah. ever. I, I know you are. It's going to be Saturday night. I mean, we'll talk about it a little at the end, but man, this is going to be a huge game. It's supposed to be, I believe they told me that the, the bottom level's already sold out. Oh, of course. So That's how it always ends up being for them. I, in the JU game, it was that way as well. Uh, but I think you talk about the size factor. Getting back Romello Banks for tournament play, that'll be huge is he supposed for to be the back? Ospreys. I believe so. I think he's that supposed to be, be back for, six for eleven. tournament play. I mean, because our shortest guy is set 6'8". Yeah. I mean, we're talking 6'8". That's huge. But, like, you know, when you're talking, playing against Georgetown and things yeah. like that, they got three guys that are seven foot. So, but we're going to take a quick break. Uh, right after that, obviously, we had some NBA, NFL last night, big week. But go Ospreys winning. Just put a pressure. We'll be right back after this on center court with Matthew Driscoll. Except he's not here, so. You're watching Spinnaker Television. I've never seen anything like this. Just tell us what you know about how these deaths occurred. The six members of the family were found last night in bed, shot and killed. Isn't it unusual to have six members of a family on two separate floors shot and nobody moved from their beds? Police have charged 23-year-old Ronald DeFeo Jr. Accused claims he heard voices coming from within the house telling him to murder his family. <laughs> We're back here, center court, with Matthew Driscoll. Of course, he's not here. I'm Ryan Hennessy. If you can see my name right there, Alex Gatlin right there. Took off his uh, fraternity sticker, trying to be more professional. Trying to be. Trying to we'll be. We'll see that's, how well it works. That's the key word. But uh, talking about professional, I think it was a professional way to end a you know a short career for a Cleveland Very Cavaliers short NBA career. head coach, David Blatt. Tell me a little bit about David Blatt before he came to the Cavs. Obviously, he came before LeBron James decided to come back home mm -hmm. in Cleveland. And I thought that was... You know, they didn't think he was going to come back, and that was kind of why they went with David Blatt. They thought it was going to be a different move. And then they got LeBron James, and maybe they would have thought about who LeBron James wanted as their coach before they went for David Blatt. But David Blatt, tell me about him, Alex. Well, David Blatt, he is, has had nothing but success over in, over in Europe. Uh, 2014 won the Euro League and was the Euro League Coach of the Year, five-time Israeli League champion, and also uh, the Russian Super League Coach of the Year in 2005. Not to mention, when he coached the Russian national team in 2012, he took home the bronze medal. That's pretty huge. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I find this move to fire him right now extremely interesting and 
I don't understand it because he's 83 and 40. Yeah, you see 83 and 40, 30 and 11 this year. I mean, uh, at first place. He's got them in first place in the East. It, it doesn't make any sense. And now you're going with one of his assistant coaches. It's not like anything's really going to change that much. Yeah, the, the, the general manager Griffin said he saw a disconnect in the locker room, especially after that game against the Warriors. And that was kind of something that I, you know, LeBron James is a very, he likes to control the team. And mm -hmm. if it's not clicking with LeBron, I think it's LeBron or David Blatt. And I yeah. think they picked LeBron. Um, Tyron Liu has been the voice, I think, the new coach that just took over the voice room. Do you think that the NBA, not playing in the NBA, not having success in the NBA, has a respect factor on David Blatt? Do they not respect him as much as, let's say, Tyron Liu, who played in the NBA, played against a, was an assistant coach for a great coach in Doc Rivers, mm -hmm. you know, played for the Magic for a couple of years. I remember that uh, little stint. Wasn't a great NBA player. He was, he was all right. He was a, he was a good six man coming off yeah. the bench. Everybody remembers Except him. Except of course he started for the Magic. Yeah. You know, or just yeah, the Magic. They, they were garbage. But uh, but if, if you remember, uh, he came off the bench for the Lakers when they won two titles yep. uh, back in I think oh, uh, 2000 and then oh one. Uh, but everybody remembers him for getting stepped over by Allen Iverson. So that was <laughs> that was kind of fun. But no, I, I think Tyrone Liu, besides him taking over for kind of a franchise that's in shambles, Cleveland as a sports town is kind of in shambles right now. Uh, but I think overall, if, if this stint doesn't work out with Cleveland, he's going to be a good coach because I've been thinking it for a while since he's been under Doc Rivers that he has been a talent at the coaching position. Yeah, and I, I mean, obviously they played um, Saturday night. I watched the game. They lost against the Bulls in his debut. And, mm. and a lot of people, especially in the media, like to try to kind of overreact to one game. I mean, obviously they have a huge season and I think getting used to it, but the big thing that they wanted to do was get Kevin Love to take over the game. So that's a big thing they want to see. Do you see him having success more than David Blatt? Do you see them winning a championship with him? I know it's too soon to say, obviously with the coaching change, but what do you see with Tyron Liu? Uh, I don't think there's going to be any change. Um, really, when it comes down to it, coaches can only do so much, especially in David Blatt's situation. He really did try. He tried to bring in his EuroLeague system that he uses, uh, but it comes down to what the players do on the court. And the NBA, that's what it's about. You see what Greg Popovich has done in San Antonio, yeah. but that's because the players buy into his system. Exactly. And the I players think... always have to buy into the system for it to work. So I, in this sense, I think David Black got fired because his players didn't buy into his system. I agree. I think they weren't buying into it, and they, they, you know, they were on a short leash. Uh, LeBron James, not the youngest player in the NBA, and we're not yeah. the oldest, but not the youngest. The talent's still there, but uh, well, he's not even. If you really think about it, he's not even the best anymore. Yeah, oh, you got well, Steph Curry stepping up. Steph Curry's and definitely Kawhi stepping Leonard. up. Kawhi Leonard, definitely, but. We'll see. We'll see how the Cavs do. We're going to take another quick break. NFL happened yesterday, yeah. and greatness <laughs> played greatness. Peyton Manning, Tom Brady. We'll talk about that right after. Center court with Matthew Driscoll. You're watching Spinnaker Television. I just want to apologize to Mike's mom and Josh's mom and my mom. I am so, so sorry because it is my fault. Because it was my project. I am so scared. Coming to you live from the nation's capital where the Barton University Bellas are performing for the President of the United States on his birthday. Oh. I came in like a wrecking ball. Oh no, she has no underwear on. Oh my God. We have a commando situation. She's turning. No. Brace yourself. She's coming. She's coming. Oh. The Australian singer gave the President a birthday gift from down under. Bellas are suspended. You're being replaced by the European champions. We are the sound machine. How are we going to compete with them? I'm not supposed to have any ideas. I'm the hot one. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'm the hot one. If we win the world championships, will you reinstate us? If you win it. 
Oh, ho, ho. Bart and Bellas. You are so tiny. We're gonna kick your ass. Your team is like a, how do you say that? A, a heated mess. A mess where heat is applied to it. So what once was a little messy is now even messier. Never trust a big button, a smile. That girl is always oh. on. Here we go, yo. Here we go, yo. So what, so what, so what, so what, so what, so what, so Please just retire. Did your accents get thicker? Is that like a intimidation thing? Because World War II, boom. When I look back on this, I won't remember performing and competing. I'm gonna remember you weirdos. Me too. Me too. Me too. Guys, there's gonna be some haters out there. They're gonna look at us, Team USA, and be like, why is the most talented one Australian? Who run the world? Girls! Who run this mother? Oh, girls! Well, these this girls mother? have broken down every single barrier in their path. Girls! Who run the world? What an inspiration to girls all over the country who are too ugly to be cheerleaders. Who run the world? Girls! We run this mother? Girls! girls! Hey UNF, January is coming to a close, which means you need to pick up a 2015 winter issue of Spinnaker Magazine before they are all gone. It's packed full of content like music and movie reviews, as well as the results of the 2015 sale awards. So grab yours today. Also, stay tuned to unfspinnaker.com this week because we're giving you the first peek into UPD's new look with their cars and uniforms. Too busy to access our website? Go ahead and download Spinnaker's free app so you're in the know wherever you go. We'll also have the coverage of UNF's basketball's doubleheader this weekend against FGCU. Speaking of basketball, don't forget to check out our YouTube page for our latest episode of Center Court with Matthew Driscoll. Have a great weekend, Ospreys. We are UNF Spinnaker and we are working for you. Back here, center court with Matthew Driscoll on Spinnaker Television, Alex Gatlin alongside Ryan Hennessy. NFL, like I said, happened. Greatness, yeah. greatness, but we're going to get into that in a second. First, we're going to talk a little local, 904, Jacksonville Jaguars. Looking for a new defensive coordinator, and I think they found one Well, in Todd Walsh. They hired one, Todd yeah, Walsh. Yeah, they Tell hired Todd, Todd Walsh. Walsh. Uh, Todd Walsh was with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers when Gus Bradley was there. He's followed Gus Bradley everywhere he's gone. He started out as the defensive line coach uh, with – the Buccaneers then went on to the Seattle Seahawks with a defensive line coach there. We all know what the Seahawks defense has done. Oh, yeah. And then followed Gus Bradley here to the Jaguars and has been a, a great uh, addition to have. He's really coached up Cinderic Marks and, and helped these new guys coming in like uh, uh, Dante Fowler Jr. So I, I think he's got, the, he's got what it takes to be the defensive coordinator. I personally would have rather had Jim Schwartz, yeah. who they were also going after, but – I think Todd Walsh is, is the man for the job right now. Now, my question to you, and you see this record right here, I mean, moving around with Gus Bradley, and that's the big question is, do you think Gus Bradley kind of helped him out because he followed him around? I mean, he left a championship-winning Seattle Seahawks mm -hmm. team to go to the Jaguars. And, <clears throat> excuse me, that was really the big question to me is, did he kind of owe him one, or did he think that he was proving himself? Because, to me, if you're going to hire someone on the defense for the Jaguars, you're going to go with, the linebackers coach. You're not going to go with the defensive line coach. I mean, you got an aging, you've got an aging defensive line right now. So Derek Marks looks like the hot spot in their defense, and he's been hurt half the season. Mm -hmm. The defensive line has not proved anything to me. We're talking about drafting another defensive lineman in the question, you know, this upcoming draft for the fifth overall pick. So was this guy the most qualified person for the position? I mean, you have a completely different offense than last year. Your weak spot was now the defense, where two years ago it was the offense. So now you're trying to fix the, 
the defense and you keep a guy who is in the organization, is this Gus Bradley just trying to keep his scheme going and not wanting someone to come in and say, I want the defense, this is my defense. If Jim Schwartz came in, he would say, this is my defense, I want this defense. That's my question to you. Is, do you think Gus Bradley was a little selfish? Says, I want it the way I want it and this guy will listen to me? Well, I think Gus Bradley wants to have a chance to see what his defense can do. Dante Fowler was supposed to be that Leo linebacker, which they desperately need in order to be successful in his defensive scheme. Uh, and obviously, they got robbed out of that when he tore his ACL on the first day of non-contact rookie minicamp. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I think it's a little bit selfish, but I also understand why he wants to go this direction. I think he trusts Todd because he's been around Todd for so long. Uh, and I think Todd will run the system that he wants and really coach the guys up the way he wants as well. We'll see how it goes, man. We'll see, we'll <laughs> see how the defense goes. But moving on, we're obviously. Praying, we're hoping yeah, and we're, praying. We're hoping the Jaguars get more than five wins this year. But yeah. uh, NFL playoffs, obviously, conference championship. I mean, it's been, it's been fun. The first game was a shootout. Two legends, Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, both first ballot Hall of Famers. Mm -hmm. Um, and honestly, I, people ask me, who do you think is going to win? And what I said to them was, who do I think is going to win or who do I want to win? I wanted Denver to win. I thought Tom Brady was going to get it done. Mm -hmm. And you know who stopped him? Not Peyton Manning, but that defense. Oh, my gosh. That defense was suffocating. That defense was who, – who, I mean, just tell us who stood Von out. Von Miller kept Tom Brady on his butt all day long. I think he had something like three sacks and an interception. Yeah. Uh, so Von Miller was the real key. I think he was the MVP of this game for sure. Uh, but yeah, the defense was just smothering. Yeah, they they I, Tom Brady threw uh, two interceptions plus that one at the end there for the uh, for the two point conversion, which really sealed the game. Um, but yeah, the defense was was unbelievable because neither team could really move the ball. It was field goals left and right. Yeah, uh, just a few touchdowns. Oh, and couple Daniels. missed, couple missed a uh, missed extra. Well, yeah, point. the extra point that would have been huge for them. Yeah, that would have tied the game. And I mm -hmm. honestly think if they would have made that extra point, I think Tom Brady would have won. Oh. One going day. into overtime, I think Tom Brady, yeah. because Tom Brady had the advantage. He had momentum going into it, whereas yeah. Peyton Manning, you could see him getting tired. You could see the, the, the zip coming off of his ball. He overthrew. They had a first down that they could have gotten, but he underthrew him right there. Overthrew that touchdown. We yep, watched overthrew right the touchdown this. just just outside the fingertips. Uh, but then he also did have two other good touchdowns when he threw to Owen Daniels. Yeah. Both, both of his touchdowns were to Owen Daniels. So. Yeah, Owen Daniels definitely played well. Mm -hmm. I, I'm impressed. Peyton Manning. Legacy continues, and mm -hmm. I think that's something that really is, you know, so impressive. If he wins this Super Bowl, and we're going to get into the Super Bowl picks in a second, I think he retires and becomes a legend. Oh, I think he retires 100%. He wants to go out the way John Elway did. Why not Ray go Lewis out the way? Did, yeah. The way, you know, the legends do. Um, but obviously that was a shootout. Uh, Peyton, Denver winning, barely. Winning. I think he knows that there's not much left in his arm. Yeah. Uh, compared to obviously a Tom Brady, but moving on, yeah. Carolina Arizona. That game was <sighs> Man, that game that was, was that game. That game was a blowout. Uh, obviously, uh, you know Carolina. I thought Carolina was going to win. I didn't know it was going to be like this though. Forty-nine to fifteen blowout. Cam Newton. He's the truth, man. I, 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 I said it in the beginning. I said he's not going to make it this far, and I, I, I'm, I was wrong. I was completely wrong. I didn't believe that he had the experience, but this guy is a different breed. I mean, mm. you talk about Russell Wilson being a different breed, but this guy is six foot five, 240 pounds. The guy can run. The guy can throw. He's a leader. But he's, he's a so fullback. He's yeah. a running back. He's a quarterback. And sometimes he's even a wide receiver. So yeah. he's extremely dangerous. You, you look at that play from Ted Ginn when they ran the reverse. Mm -hmm. Every single one of the defenders watched where Cam Newton was going and didn't even see the pitch. And that's what set it up. He's definitely someone to look out for mm -hmm. in the Super Bowl. Obviously, he's going to be the MVP, I think. I mean, there's no one else there's, to give it to. Especially after the way Carson Palmer played with four picks. <laughs> yeah, four picks. That Carson Palmer and Russell Wilson were the only other two that I would have put up there for the MVP. Yeah. And Carson Palmer kind of threw his ballot away in that game right Absolutely. there. Absolutely. Literally threw it away. Mm -hmm. um, Arizona, you know, I didn't really stand a chance. But no. um, I, I'm, I'm really impressed with that defense of Carolina as well. Um, but... Arizona couldn't, just couldn't get it done next year maybe because the time's ticking on Carson Palmer. I mean, yeah. he doesn't have that much longer to go in his career. The guy's like 37 or around that. I think, I think 30, he's like 36, 36, 37, yeah. And, I mean, he's getting old. But, you know, we'll see. We'll see. But Super Bowl, moving on to the Super Bowl, big, big game. <laughs> and I think that this is going to be a shootout. 
Really? That, because of that defense. Not because of Peyton Manning, but because of that defense. That defense, I think, is the only defense. Because Arizona, people say that their defense is good, but they have some holes. They yeah. have some linebacker holes. They've got some defense. I mean, they have great players in some positions. Missing Tyron Matthew. This defense is the most complete defense in the NFL. Yes. Absolutely. Besides, obviously, maybe Carolina, who's also got a great defense. I, but they it's, have some it's holes. It's one and two when it comes to yeah, defense. Yeah, and I think, I I think, think Denver's really one. really proves the old adage that defense wins championships. Absolutely. Because you look at it. These and with are an MVP two, quarterback. Yeah, and with an MVP you got to have <laughs> two MVP, MVP quarterbacks. quarterbacks Five-time yeah. MVP yeah. quarterback Peyton Manning and uh, – Cam Newton's not, not far He's gonna behind be the, with the... He's uh, going to be a one-time MVP yeah. quarterback coming maybe, into this game. Maybe, maybe a couple more after yep, the maybe. season. But who do you got winning? Really quick. We're going to get into the Super Bowl picks next week more with Driscoll when he comes on. But who do you have really quickly after seeing these two games? You can obviously see Carolina dominated. Who do you have winning? You know... Who do you have winning? Not who do you want to win? You know, I, I, I think they're one and the same, actually. Really? Yeah. Uh, I think everybody's going to go with Carolina. They're the smart pick. Really? Because they are the full team. Everybody's going to go with them? Yep. So everyone's going to be rooting for Carolina. No, no, no. I think everybody's going to choose Carolina as their as their champion. Okay. But I think Peyton Manning brings out a little bit of a little Zest. bit of the yeah. He kind of <laughs> kind of puts on the icy hot and yeah. and he's he's good to go one more and he, game. yeah, one more game just gets out there and throws his chicken wing around and see if he can see if he can uh, sling a few touchdowns, but you know, I think I think the Broncos take it. Broncos take I it. I think the Broncos take it. I want them to, man, but I, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if the Broncos can do it, man. I don't. I, that defense is so good. And, I mean, that yeah. defense is – Carolina's defense is so good. Luke Keekley is the best linebacker in the game. Josh Norman is the best corner in the game right now. I mean, I think he surpassed Sherman this year. Sherman didn't have a, as good of a year as he did. I mean, shutting down almost everyone, almost everyone besides Odell, obviously, but a little bit shut him down, took him out for a game. But, yeah. I mean, they, they, they're just so good. I, I – I, I want Denver to win, but I think Carolina is going to do it. I mean, that, that run of Cam Newton, if, if you get a healthy Jonathan Stewart, I, I, I just I can't see them not getting it done. Without a run game in Denver, I just can't see them getting it done. But uh, I want to move on. Ballers and dudes, obviously, we have a segment called Ballers and Dudes. Every week we do it. we got cool whiteboards for it. We're going to start with dudes this week. Obviously, Coach Driscoll said Ballers and Dudes. I also want to go with your dude. A dude is a guy that didn't quite get it done, isn't the best uh, who's your dude right there? Well, I'm going to go with Carson Palmer. Carson Palmer certainly did not get it done this week. He uh, threw four picks, and when you're in the NFC title game against Carolina, you can't throw four picks. You've got to lead your team. So, And he also had uh, two fumbles as well. So yeah. a total of six turnovers for his team. You can't do that as your starting quarterback and as the MVP candidate that you are. You have to lead your team to victory. But – you know, Ryan, who do you have? I've got the NFL kickers in the playoffs. This is, I mean, losing games. I, I think Tom Brady would have had the best shot to beat, I over Peyton Manning to beat Cam Newton. And I think that they blew it. Uh, obviously, Steven Guskowski missing that extra point. I mean, that's a chip shot. The guy's made how many in his career? I think, I think it was like 500 straight till he missed yeah. that one. They lost by one point. They had to go for a two-point conversion, didn't make it. And NFL kickers, Blair Walsh, missing that game winner. And now Seattle moves mm -hmm. on. I mean, those things, you have to hit those. And these are two of the best kickers. And in the playoffs, just you're a different kicker. So yeah. I think that was a huge, huge miss. But we're going to go to ballers. Ballers are the, the real good guys, the ones that played really well. And obviously, I mean, this guy, I was going to pick I, him. I, I am a Peyton Manning fan 100%. And I think Peyton Manning is definitely my baller this week. Peyton Manning, he has had an illustrious career. He has been the sheriff, as John Gruden likes to call him. And I think this week he really showed that he can do it and really take this team into the playoffs. Uh, I think he is going to win this Super Bowl this year, get his second Super Bowl, tie him up with his brother Eli, your, your quarterback. So we'll see what he does, but I, I got Peyton Manning as my baller. Yeah, this week. definitely. I mean, unbelievable story this year being hurt. But mm -hmm. uh, this is going to be my wrap up and my, my dude of the week. Obviously, UNF men's basketball. Going up to that storm, my mm -hmm. whole family's from New York, and they went up to New Jersey, and it was, you know, they, got the, they couldn't practice yesterday yep. or two days ago because of the snow. And I think that that was really something that you got to tip your hats to Bo Beach and their, his team, UNF men's basketball. Record 23 pointers, impressive wins this week. And I think coming back home to the sunny, I guess sunny, I'm cold right now, but not <laughs> as cold. Uh, I'm sure they would love to come back to Florida but, weather. Yeah, but moving on, UNF men's basketball moving on. Obviously, Saturday night, it's going to be a big one. Mm -hmm. It's going to be FGCU in the UNF arena. 
So that's going to be huge. Coach Driscoll will be back next week. Ryan Hennessy alongside Alex Catlin. UNF basketball, be out there. UNF Arena, signing out. I had a paper. I was going to throw it. But, but he doesn't have it today. Center court Matthew Driscoll, signing out. You're on out. Spinnaker Television. Oh.